Welcome to a new lesson of heat transfer. Today we start talking about numerical methods. So we want to use computer simulations to solve conduction problems. In previous lessons we've seen that we were able to find analytical solutions. So we were able to express the temperature as a function, for example, of the radius of a sphere and as a function of time. And we we're relying on assumptions, for example, uh, one-dimensional assumption in space. Or we use the LAM system analysis, so we were studying cases where the temperature could be approximated to be as a function of time only. So these cases were useful because the physics was revealed and we had a closed form solutions for the temperature. But what about if we want to study heat conduction in more complicated systems, for example, the one sketched here. Here we have a two-dimensional space and the boundaries are irregular. And at each boundary we have a different boundary condition and we want to find the temperature at each point. So for such case, of course, it would be impossible to find a closed form solution like we found for a sphere. So we need to rely on computer simulations. But analytical solutions are certainly useful. Let's see the advantages and disadvantages of, for example, analytical methods. So thanks to analytical methods, we need to um, find solutions that are in closed form. So this means that we have the temperature that can be expressed as a function of space and time. And so this is very useful and this solution can be used easily. Another advantage is that the physics is often revealed. If you remember, for example, for the lumped system analysis, we found the temperature that behaved in exponential form. And the exponent B had this form. So we could study the physics by varying these parameters and we knew how the temperature would uh, respond if one of these uh, parameters were changed. So this is an advantage of analytical solutions, but there are certain disadvantages. We can only treat simple geometries, for example, the play wall or the cylinder or the sphere. And we had to rely on assumptions, for example, the one dimensional assumptions or the lump system analysis assumption. And finally, for some cases, if you remember, the transient cases where the temperature depended on time and one coordinate system, then we found that the temperature had to be expressed in a series form. So we had to rely on some computer code to compute this uh, complicated series anyway. said so numerical methods also have advantages and disadvantages. So what are the advantages of numerical methods? Thanks to numerical methods, we can study more complicated geometry. So geometries of system that can appear, for example, in industrial settings. And we could solve the equations or heat conduction equations in our case in their entirety so we don't have to rely on assumptions but on the other hand we also have disadvantages because the physics may not be revealed because the output of computer simulation obviously is a series of, of data so we have to still uh, interpret them somehow often the computer simulation can be expensive and we can have numerical errors of course and sometimes if we don't code it well, then our software can contain some bugs. So some, uh, some errors in the, in the numerical programming. In general, I can say that the best idea is of course to use analytical methods together with numerical methods and together with experiments. So we, if we have this a uh, combination of approaches, of course, this is the best way to study uh, heat transfer by, in general, any scientific problem. 
So numerical methods, of course, can be of different kinds. We can have finite different methods, finite volume, finite elements, or very accurate spectral methods. And we can study steady or unsteady problems or conduction, convection, and even radiation can be included. But in our discussion, we focus on finite different methods and we concentrate on steady problems. And we only study conduction problems and we neglect convection and radiation. So for the finite difference approximation, we have to go back and think about the definition of derivative. So if you have a function here as a function of x, and we want the derivative at point x, so of course, this is the definition. We take the limit of delta x going to zero, where delta x is the distance along x between the point x and another point x plus delta x. By taking the limit of this ratio, then we have the mathematical definition of derivative. This is for a generic function f, but of course in our conduction problem, f will be the temperature. So now that we have reminded ourselves what the derivative is, we can now take a step, step back. So what we do, instead of taking the limit as delta x going to zero, we consider delta x that's finite. So the derivative of df of dx will not be a ratio of two differentials, but will be a delta, a finite delta f divided by a finite delta x. So actually here we should have d So the derivative df over dx is given by this ratio, but we are introducing an error. And the error is, in this case, proportional to delta x squared. Of course, there are different ways to discretize uh, the derivative. But in general, we can say that we accept an error due to the fact that delta x is finite. So we don't have the limit going to zero. By having delta x finite underway, in any way, we have the error under control because we know that as delta x goes to zero, the error also goes to zero. And how does it go to zero? In this case, which is a second order approximation that we studied, we have a delta x squared going to zero. That's the magnitude of the error we know how delta x goes to zero. We don't know exactly the magnitude of the arrow, but we know how it decreases as delta x approaches zero. The next step is to create a numerical mesh, also called numerical grid. For simplicity, Let's consider the case of one-dimensional heat conduction and we have the temperature that depends on the coordinate x only. What we have to do, we have to split the domain and we define points at a distance delta x to each other. We have an m, large m number of points between zero and the distance x equal l and we use an index so each point in the domain is numbered so the first point is i equal zero the second point i equal one all the way to i equal n minus one and of course we know that as the number of points increases then delta x has to go down so we approximate the derivative of the temperature over space more and more accurately. And in this way, we find the solution not everywhere in the space, but only at the grid points that we have defined. This procedure is called discretization.
and let's see how the discretization works. So our objective is to discretize, so obtain an approximate solution, a numerical solution to, for example, this differential equation, that's a conduction equation, steady, one-dimensional, where k, the thermal conductivity, is constant, and we have some heat generation that, in general, depends on space. So thanks to numerical methods, we have the temperature at each grid point. So, for example, a generic point I, the temperature is called T subscript I. And the temperature at position I minus 1 would be T I minus 1. And at position I plus 1 would be the temperature subscript I plus 1. Let's see now how we can approximate and we so we discretize the differential equation. So the conduction term is a second derivative with respect of x. So since we have a second derivative, we can write it as the derivative of the derivative. So the second derivative is nothing but the ratio between dt dx allocation plus minus dt dx allocation minus divided by delta x. But the next step is to write the derivative dt dx in discretized form following the finite different approximation of the derivative. So we do this for the first derivative here, dt dx at position plus, and for this derivative at position minus here. And we can add a subscript i to the heat generation E. So in general, it depends on X. So we have to define the discretized value of the known heat generation. So what we do now, we divide by delta X. So we have a delta X squared appearing in the discretized form of the heat conduction equation. And this is the final discretized form of the heat conduction equation. And if we have delta x going to zero, the discretized equation here tends to the differential equation. And so this is a discretized form of the second derivative of the temperature with respect of x. Note that every time we have a second derivative that's discretized by finite difference, we will have a delta x squared at the denominator. But this is in one dimension right? Because the temperature depends only on x. What happens if we want to study a two-dimensional problem by finite difference? So the approach is exactly the same. So in general, for example, in 3D, we will have the Laplacian of the temperature plus heat generation term equals zero. In 2D, the Laplacian can be written as the sum of the second partial derivatives. Now partial, remember, because the temperature depends on x and y. So partial t partial x squared, this is a fixed position y. And here, partial t partial y, second derivative, this is at fixed location x. Now we can do exactly the same. We can discretize this in two dimensions. So we discretize along x and along y. So along x, we do exactly the same thing. We have a grid along x and the index i runs from zero all the way to m minus one, when capital M is the number of points or grid points along x. Along y, we do the same thing. We have grid points along y. J would be the index running from 0 all the way to n minus 1. And n is the number of grid points along y. So the space in 2D defined by the coordinate x and y 
will be discretized by a grid and the space the spacing along x is delta x that's the distance between two points along x and we have a delta y that's the distance between two points along y our solution will be found at each grid point so the temperature for example a generic position ij will be t subscript ij so we need now two indices i and j so i running along x and y running along y sorry j running along y so by using exactly the same discretization procedure we find the two-dimensional discretized heat conduction equation in this case with some heat generation and note that the heat generation also has two indices here we have i and j because in general the heat generation for this problem depends on space x and y so we have two terms the first term is the partial derivative of x of t with respect of x second derivative and the second term here is the second derivative temperature with respect to y you note here that for x is the index i that changes because we are fixing j because this is partial x so the j index that runs along y is fixed whereas here instead we have i that's fixed index i is fixed because the location x is fixed because here we have a partial t partial y second derivative and it's the j index that varies because it's the y coordinates that varies in this case we have delta x that in general is different from delta y so a special case is the case where delta x is equal to delta y so in some cases you you don't need to use more points one direction or the other so you're happy with having delta x equal delta y so this is the case of a square mesh and if you do a bit of algebra the previous discretized equation reduces to this simple form okay thank you very much for listening i'll see you in the next video